Good afternoon and welcome to the National Urban League's Digital Career Success Series brought to you by the Urban League's Jobs Network. My name is Jody Brockington and I am today's host. We have been wor working through this theme of press start on your career in this first part since January, covering topics that are important to make a fresh impression in the new year to your career. Today, we will be discussing the four P's of promotion. And, you know, it's hard enough to get a job, let alone everyone then struggles to get a promotion, a raise, etc. So we have brought you the none, none, none of the less more, I would say the most necessary skill is promotion. How do you promote yourself? How do you stand out? And we brought you today Katrina Vecchi, who will give you some tips from the C-suite point of view. I had the pleasure of meeting Katrina a long time ago while she was at the American Heart Association. She probably doesn't even remember that. Um, but, and she also uh, continues to work, she worked in high levels in not only the American Heart Association, but also the C Susan G. Komen uh, Cancer Research Organization, two of the top national nonprofits as a great leader. Um, it is rare that we get so many women in charge and for Women's History Month, we must remember that women do don't only lead in the C-suite of corporate America, but we lead in other places and sectors as well. So health is important to Katrina. She decided to branch out on her own, use her skills to help empower other women, and of course our men out there in our audience as well, to love yourself, to focus on yourself, and to be your best self, to connect with others, and to serve in a leadership role wherever you are. Today, she's gonna to tell us how can we move our career forward by getting a promotion, by getting noticed, but doing it the right way. There's ways to do that that might not get you the promotion, and some of us might be struggling with that now. For those of you in our audience who are also entrepreneurs and on a separate path somewhere else on your own, you too need to hire the right people, promote them right, and make sure that they're doing the things that are necessary for you to notice, and sometimes they do things that they think you're noticing and want a promotion, and often get passed by. So pay attention on both sides of the house, no matter where you are, mid-career, upper mid-career, just starting out or trying to bring yours to a close. Without further ado, Katrina McGee, thank you so much for joining us today. And I wanna remind everyone that today we are gonna be giving away two of Katrina's great book, Be Bold, Be Brilliant, Be You. They will be signed copies for those of you who stay till the and and continue to send in great questions insightful information and stay connected so get ready to find out if you are ready to get promoted katrina thank you so much for joining us today good morning good afternoon thank you for having me i am super excited to be here today i want to make sure that i have uh the screen can everybody see the four p's of getting promoted jody do you see that Yes, it is all awesome. awesome. So welcome, everybody. I am so excited to get started. This is one of my favorite subjects to talk about because I love seeing people move forward in their career to get noticed and acknowledged for their great work. I want to start out with a quick poll. How many of you have ever been promoted? Can we throw up that poll? It's one of the questions I ask, so I know who's in the audience, I know where people are coming from, their mindset, et cetera, because my goal today is three things. Number one, I wanna leave you with actions that you can take right now. Number two, I wanna challenge you with thinking, those long held truths, some of which have become career sabotaging hacks. And the third thing is, I want to encourage a spirit of forever learning. Great, 88% of you have been promoted. Let me say something to the other 12, percent of you who have not if you moved from the 11th to the 12th grade congratulations you have been promoted you came to your career as a successful executive already without doing a thing one of the things we have to realize is that success and failure are events never people and so we have to learn to celebrate those moments in time everybody that has a job has been promoted. So now that you know that you are operating from a spirit of success, I want to tell you the little secret about work that we often forget. 
see, which is that 99% of the decisions impacting our career are made without us being in the room. Ugh, y'all know what I'm talking about. I call it behind the closed door. That's where management goes and does a talent review. They say things like, oh, this person is on track. We need to look at where we can move them in the next 12 months. Or they say, this person is great, but they need a little bit more polish if they only had more presence. Or they say, you know what? This person is kind of peaked. This is where they're probably not going to go any higher. None of us want to be in that category. And then the final category is this is not a good fit for us. So today, as we go through it, we're going to talk about the four P's of getting promoted, the four things you can do right now to help accelerate your career, to stand out and to show up as your highest and best. Here's a framework from which we're going to talk today. And I created these four P's because I consistently saw that there were things that were sabotaging our career that no one really talked to us about directly. They were impacting us, but no one was saying them to us. So as we go through each one of these today, I want you to really stop and think, what can I do right now that will make a difference? Let's begin with embracing the possibilities. Here's what's happening to us. Most of us are going for what we think we can get, not what we want. So the first shift I want you to say today is I am designed to operate at my highest and best. Those desires of your heart are possible. Listen, y'all, we live in a world where people make a living playing video games. So if that's possible, then the things that you want to be promoted, to work part time, to work remote, to work in a large company, to work in a small one, all those things that you really want for your career are possible. The question is, what do you have to to do to get them. So as we talk through this today, I want you to ask yourself, what if I could really have it all? All of what I want in my life and my career. Now, here's the first thing we have to do. Power up our personal brand. Personal branding is the ongoing process of establishing a prescribed image or impression in the minds of others. Now, here's a couple of things about me. Number one, I talk really fast because I'm so excited to be here with you. So listen, take note. I'm not going to be long, but this is going to be strong. And what you want to write down is the things that hit you all up in here like, oh my God, that's so me. That was for you. If something passes you by, that wasn't for you. The things that we all need to go forward together, I will say, write that down. Here's the first thing. Personal branding is the ongoing process, which means that our personal brand evolves over time. As the seasons of our life change, our priorities change and things like that, we remain the same, but how we present ourselves can often show up different. It's an ongoing process of establishing a prescribed image or impression, which means that if you want a powerful brand, you have to define you for you. And you're establishing it in the minds of others, which means you may think that you're showing up a certain way way, but it's only when you ask others, when you do an audit, that you determine if you have a powerful personal brand. So the four things to keep in mind when you're trying to power up your personal brand is first to define you for you. Very quickly, I want you to write down five to seven words that describe you, beginning with the phrase, I am. I am a leader. I am strong, I am determined, I am a masterpiece, I am a problem solver, whatever it is. I'm not asking for your job description. I'm asking you, if somebody else was describing you, what are the words that you would want them to know about you? Very quickly, write those five to seven things down. The second thing is, after we get off the phone, I want you to audit your online and offline presence to determine if how you're showing up is reflective of those words. What you really want is consistency in your personal brand. You see, sometimes how we show up at the office is a little bit different than how we show up online. And we think because online through social media that we often have just our friends that that's okay. But the truth is you have one brand and you have to be consistent across every area so that when a person goes in, they have a consistent experience. When a person sees you and engages with you, they know what they can expect from you. The third thing is to activate. If you are a leader, if you are a problem solver, if you are determined or driven, how are you activating against those words? 
How are you giving value to the marketplace? Remember, everything you do speaks for you. So if you are these things, are you showing up that way? And how are you operating, making choices that reflect that? Finally, it is to connect. Powerful personal brands always have strong connections. We are creatures of interconnectedness. So I wanna challenge you this week, this is really simple. Instead of having lunch at your desk to connect with your coworkers. You see, people connect with people and it's often because we hold ourselves so close to the vest that we miss the opportunity to make those deeper connections that can pay big dividends in our career. Giving up lunch one or two days a week and actually proactively going to seek out your coworkers to have lunch is a great way to get to know people on a much more personal level. You'll be shocked to know that in a recent survey of leaders, 83% said they consider out of the office, off the desk, outside of work when they are thinking about who to promote. It's because they want to know you. They want to know that you are consistently the person that they perceive you to be. So listen, define you for you five to seven words. Audit your online and offline appearance to show that you are reflecting who you say that you are activate. Figure out how you can give value as a problem solver. Don't always wait to be asked. Find ways that you can use your gifts, who you really are at work and in your community. And then finally connect. Just one day in the next seven days, I challenge you to have lunch with your coworkers. Get to know them and allow them to know you. Strong personal brands are consistent and rooted in authenticity. They are the key to getting noticed at the office even beyond your work. Now, let me ask a quick question. How many of you use social media? Are you still using social media? Because this is an area that sometimes gets us in trouble, but it's also a wonderful opportunity. We have our poll up. So here's what I want you to think about as it relates to social media. Great, 84% of you use social media. For the other 16%, here's what I will say. At the very least, you need a completed LinkedIn profile because when you don't use social media, you are often conspicuous in your absence. Now, a great way to give value on social media is to learn to curate and create content. By that, I mean whatever your expertise is in leadership and problem solving and analytics and accounting, and you could even use something personal like gardening. Make sure that you give value, share a part of yourself. I can consistently look for articles that are around entrepreneurship, leadership, things that are new in the market related to problem solving and key areas for me, and I share those. Why? Because I want to give value based on what I'm good at. When you consistently are of value to others, they seek you out and it becomes a strong element of your personal brand. So think about using social media, not only to share the parts of yourself that are personal that you want the world to know, but also that are professional. So you are establishing a track record for yourself. Here's a key, y'all. It is because of my powerful personal brand that when I left work, I was able to pivot in a consulting career. I have never looked for a client. And it's because I have a powerful personal brand where people know I'm good in business development, I'm great in marketing, I'm strong in leadership. So the more you reinforce your expertise, the more you attract the thing that it is that you want to achieve. All right, let's move on. Once you have a strong personal brand, you have to assume your A player position. Now listen, all of us can be an A player. Some of us are just out of position. So you have to really assess where you are. What you're looking for is, is the position I'm in allowing me to operate at my highest and best? Write these words down. Market your mastery. Some of us, because of the way LinkedIn and SEO works, we have decided that we have 35 competencies. Boo, I love you, but we don't have 35 competencies. What are the top three things you are good at? I mean, when you do them, you feel like you are glowing from the inside out and you rock it. That's what you want to master. 
And that's the area you want to consistently be giving value in. So if you are in a position where you don't feel like you're using your highest and best skills, or worse, you feel like the space is too small for your spirit, it's time to make a change. Make an assessment. Am I using my strongest skills? Do I have the support of leadership? Do I see a clear growth plan? And am I content and happy with what I'm doing? Now, everything on your desk won't light your fire. I don't love administrative work as an entrepreneur, but I have to get paid. So I set aside once a day, one um, time a week to focus on administrative activity. There are going to be things like that on your desk too. The question is, is 80% of your time in alignment with your strongest skill set? If not, we need to craft a strategy. Your career success requires strategy. If you are not in that position, I want you to step back and ask yourself, what are my strengths? The things that I, were, I was born with, those things that I know I've been good at since I was a little kid. What are the skills that I have developed? The skills I have gone to school for, the skills I have invested time in learning, the skills that my experience has shown me that I rock it. What is the desire of my heart? What do you really want to do? And then what are you willing to do to get it? When you look through those four lenses, you start to find your space for greatness. That's where your A player position is. Then you do the work to align yourself to a position in that area. It's a kind of a, um, a, a succinct process, but I really don't have time to unpack it right now. A lot of it is in my book to find your space for greatness, because if you're not in a player position, you will always struggle. Even with a powerful personal brand, if you're not in the right position, you're not going to get promoted. So listen, do the assessment. Think about it this week with the questions I've asked and then start to craft a strategy to make a difference. Here's the next thing, elevate your executive presence. Now, all of us know somebody with executive presence, right? Yep, we all raise our hand. It's that person when they walk in, they exude confidence, they have gravitas. We know it when we see it, but we often don't know how to elevate our own. And I, I struggle with this because a lot of us get feedback that says, oh, I really want you to work on your confidence. I want you to have more executive presence. But when you ask, what is it you want me to do? A lot of leaders struggle to tell you what that is. So I want to go through the five areas of executive presence today. And as we go through them, I'm going to give you some practical things you can do to elevate in each area. Because listen, nobody came out of their mama's womb exuding executive presence. This is a learned skill, which means that you can master it too. Write this down. Leaders master learning. Leaders master learning. You never need to be afraid of the words, I don't know, because when you master the process of learning, you know that you're on the way to being competent in the areas that are most important. So let's go through these five. Number one, attitude. Y'all, an A player with a same attitude will have a far less successful career than a C player who is uh, shows up with a can-do spirit, with a positive attitude. Now, that's not always the case, but 90% of the case it is. Why? Because everyone exudes energy. So what you bring to the office helps establish the internal culture. When you have an attitude that's stank and rank, you're not likely to get promoted. And listen, I get it. We all have life challenges. Sometimes what happened at home, we bring to work. A lot of times it's because what's happening at work, we get in a cycle of reacting instead of responding. So today I want to challenge you. If you feel like you're on the edge, like they're about to make you lose your natural mind, dial it back. Here's some practical things you can do to reorient your attitude. Number one, you set the tone for the day. If you hear nothing else I say today, this is super important. Before your feet hit the floor, express a moment of gratitude. Be present with yourself. Start the day with a spirit of abundance and then avoid your electronic device for 30 minutes. Ah, yes, I promise it is possible because see what most of us are doing is we wake up and we we automatically check our phone. We want to know who tweeted, texted, called, posted the night before. And whatever that is, it sets the tone for our day. We abdicate our power to decide how we want to start our day by checking our phone first. So back up for a moment, set the tone. Number two, 
If you are a person who has a frantic schedule, you feel like you are busy all the time, I want you to set what I call joy breaks. They are 15 minutes where you can be present with yourself and just have a moment to dial back your anxiety. For me, I like to go for a walk. If you can't go outside, get up and walk around. See people, engage with the folks around you. Or I go get a peppermint mocha. It's one of my favorite treats, whatever it is for you have 15 minutes of mindfulness, practice deep breathing, but put it on your calendar. Prioritize your own self-care so that you can have the right frame of mind and right attitude for the rest of the day. The third thing is condition yourself to respond, not react. Just because somebody is asking you something now doesn't always mean you have to answer it. You don't have to uh, enter in every argument. You will never win an argument you shouldn't be having. So cultivate your own phrases to say, that's interesting, I'll have to get back to you. Hmm, that's an interesting perspective. Huh, okay, it's nice to know you feel that way. Always stay in control of you. If you learn to respond, not react, you can keep an even keel so that your personal brand is reflective of your best. Your appearance. Y'all, this is one of the things that they talk about behind the closed door, but they never say to your face. We have to dress for our position and ambition, which means that even when we work in casual environments, we couldn't come to work like you could care less. We have to show up as our highest and best, even on casual day. Now, depending on the industry you're in, the business you're in, that could show up differently. But what you want to make sure is that your out in outer appearance reflects your internal brilliance that your outer appearance is distinct, never a distraction. So if you remember to dress for your position and ambition, then you will allow everything you do, including how you dress, to speak for you. Third is articulation. Communication is probably the hardest competence for people to master, and yet it's so important. Here's one thing that you can do today that will make a difference, I promise. Take a sticky and write two words, stop talking, stop talking. I want you to avoid the virus of rambling. You see, when we get excited, when we get nervous, when we get engaged, we do things like this. So I have this idea that I want to share with you. I don't know, you may or may not like it, but I was thinking maybe it could elevate performance if we all did it. But now that I think about it, maybe I need a budget. Well, I don't know because you see, I'm all over the place. And the person struggling to listen to me is wondering, A, what am I talking about? Because they have no context. B, why are you telling me this now? C, is this really important to me? So when you want to effectively communicate, remember it needs to be clear, concise, and complete. Delivered in context consistently. Those are the five C's. Clear, concise, complete. Delivered in context consistently. Fourth is your ambition. And this is about taking strategic risks, going beyond the envelope. Now, most of us don't take strategic risks because we have a fear of failure. But you remember I said success and failure are events, never people. Failure is data. And so you have to be willing to go beyond your comfort zone, be willing to fail in order to grow. People with executive presence take strategic risks. They don't win 100% of the time, but they are unafraid to go beyond their comfort zone because that's the only way we can grow. So challenge yourself to baby step outside of it, to put something out there. Now, I'm not telling you just to fly by the seat of your pants. You obviously have to research things and put some effort into it. But a lot of times, even if you can't solve a whole problem, if you have a particular take on it that will give value, be willing to share it. And then finally is action. This is about our willingness to follow up and follow through. Y'all, one of the things that I hear from leaders consistently is people start great. They don't finish strong. So be known as a person that follows up and follow through. Use your calendar as your tool to be a tickler. If you start something or if you put something out there, put yourself a reminder to follow up. Follow through through focus. Focus, focus, focus. So many of us try to multitask, but multitasking is the kryptonite of productivity. You do not get more done by trying to do more at one time. When you focus, you can finish strong. 
All of these areas together make strong executive presence. This is what undergirds confidence. Remember, confidence is rooted in competence. It is your belief that you can succeed at a given task. So when you come with the right attitude, positive, can do, your appearance reflects your internal brilliance. You articulate your ideas in a way that they are heard and understood. You're willing to put yourself out there and take strategic risks, and they know you will finish strong. You will be known as a person who exudes executive presence. Finally, excel in your performance. Y'all, here's the reality. Meeting your goals, that's how you get to keep your job. Yay, you! Exceeding your goals is when you get promoted. And I know that's not always a popular take, but it's the truth. Most people who have been promoted express some sort of uh, notion that they could do that job before they were placed into it. But here's the thing. They didn't know everything. They excelled where they were. They went beyond what was on the paper for their goals. And they often expressed interest. Unexpressed expectations are rarely met. Unexpressed expectations are rarely met. That doesn't mean you have to run in and say, I want to be promoted. But you do have to express interest in learning, in growing, in going beyond. Often that's what gets you promoted. Remember, promotions take you outside your comfort zone. If you already know how to do the thing, it's not really a promotion. Promotions are designed to make you a little uncomfortable. Yes, you can do it, but you're learning new things. Yes, you can do it, but you've never tried it before. You're taking those skills, the strengths and skills you've identified and applying them in a new area. So don't be afraid to go for what you want. Execute with excellence. Always bring your highest and best. Exceed what is on beyond your goals, beyond what's on the job description, and then express your interests. That is the key to getting noticed, rewarded, and acknowledged for your work. So here's our four steps. One, power up your personal brand. Be known for who you are, what you stand for, and how you give value. This is super important because you need a voice in the room even when you aren't present, and that is your personal brand. Assume an A-player position. You've got a powerful personal brand. Now you've got to get in the right position to shine as your highest and best. There is no benefit in staying in a space that is too small for your spirit. Number three, elevate your executive presence. Remember, everything you do speaks for you. So focus on showing up with the right attitude, dressed in the right attire, speaking correctly, going beyond your comfort zone, and then follow up and follow through. Finally, excelling in your performance going beyond your goal, expressing your interest in a way that shows how it will give value. See, it can't be all about just for you. It can be how you can add value to the company, how going beyond that learning new skills is important to the bottom line. Remember, this is a co-creation. This is a strategic move to get noticed and promoted. And then finally, celebrate your success. Now, What we have to learn here is we have to celebrate process and progress. So it's not just at the point of promotion. You need to celebrate that you're doing things to consistently show up as your highest and best. Celebrate when you nail your um, presentation. Celebrate when somebody notices you for great work. Every step on your journey requires celebration because it keeps you fired up and energized for the road ahead. So stop waiting for those big moments. Celebrate the fact that you invested time to be here today, right now, learning how to get noticed and promoted. Celebrate when you take one of the action steps that I've outlined today. Everything is moving you closer to your goal. Listen, I started this work this year with this phrase, not just because of the book, but because it is a challenge to all of the professionals I meet to be bold, to go for what you want, not what you think you can get, to be bold and stand up and own your excellence. Introduce yourself to your greatness by getting in position, to be brilliant, to let the light in you shine through, to be authentic. Y'all, I know being authentic requires vulnerability and intentionality. Some of us have been hurt. We don't always trust the people that are around us. But remember that we are creatures of connection and people connect with people. And when you are authentic, that is your unstoppable superpower because there is no one better at being you than you. So finally, be you. 
Bring your whole self to the office. Show up as who you are and know that you are enough. Be bold, be brilliant, be unapologetically you. All right, I hope you have your action plan for the week. I'm gonna open it up for questions and turn it back over to Jody. Wow. Ooh, high energy. If you guys are tired, you are not tired now. You should be pumped up and ready to work out or something. That's why I love this woman. Uh, when, it, when, you first, when I first heard you speak, at one of the American Heart Association meetings, rallies. I don't know, they had you out there on stage. I felt the same way I feel now. So thank you for constantly bringing it and being bold, brilliant, and yourself. Authentic to <laughs> you. Um, you know, a lot of good questions here. Uh, one thing before we move forward, because I think it will help as we answer the questions, can you go over the five areas of executive presence? Yes, yes, yes. And am I still, do I still have the screen? Yes, the five areas of executive presence. Attitude, positive, can-do spirit. That's super important, Jody, because, you know, a lot of us don't bring a can-do spirit. And what I tell leaders is coach your teams not just to be a problem presenter, but focus on being a solution seeker. So we all can say, oh, sales are down. And everybody's like, okay, yeah, sales are down. But if you come in and say that, say, you know, I noticed the sales were down 7%. I have some thoughts about what we can do. I don't have the full solution, but I want to share with you some ideas. Mm -hmm. Very different. Very different. Can do spirit. Second is appearance. It is one of the single greatest reasons that companies bring me in is because people um, are distracting at the office. And it's very difficult to say, Boo, you, you can't, you know, have your breasts hanging out. Dear uh, Johnny, you need to put on a belt so that we don't see where the sun doesn't shine. Uh, Susan, that skirt is a little too short and it's, you know, not your best look. Or, <laughs> you know, no one talks to us about wearing the right undergarments or about personal hygiene. And the sad part is, you know, we can laugh about those things, but but nothing in our appearance should be a distraction from our excellence. You know, we get to decide how we show up every day. And this is not about us all having the same si uh, style or size or um, trends. You know, I'm, I'm classic. Other people are trendy. Some people I see wear stripes and polka dots together. And I'm like, that is so cool. And I can never wear it myself. I can't carry it off. Other people struggle with their, their natural hair. And I tell them, be you, be wear your natural hair, but now you gotta bring it. So, you know, it's a lot of things. And he, let me give you all a practical example because I'm so passionate about this area. When I first transitioned from Susan G. Coma, I wanted to get a nose um, ring. I thought it would be so cool to have like a little diamond right here and it would shine and be like, da ding, da ding, da ding, I am awesome, I love it. Same time I was wearing my natural hair. Then I decided to have my natural hair blonde. I wear bold colors all the time. And all I could think about was standing on stage, speaking in corporations. And people would be like, oh, she has a nose ring. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how she takes it out. Does she have boogers? What? Now, here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with having a nose ring. I still would love to have one. But I made a conscious choice that I, with the blonde hair, the natural hair, the bold colors, the everything else I had going on, that I wanted you to be able to hear the words coming out of my mouth and not be distracted. Now, next year, I may feel totally different about that. But that's the kind of conscious decisions that you can make when you focus on showing up as your highest and best and have your end goal in mind. Third is articulation. It's all about communicating with confidence. And, you know, people struggle with this a lot. I have a whole chapter in the book dedicated to it because I do think even though so many of us are afraid to public speak, there is a way we can be better at it. Number four is ambition. It's about taking strategic risks. And number five is related to action, follow up and follow through. So is that helpful? Yes, I just have a uh, some sound. So that speaks directly to a specific question of, you know, how much do you need to compromise yourself where you want to stand out appearance wise, not in the negative way, right? So not so much body parts and the short skirt, but you know, sometimes we work in environments that we find are limiting or you know so how do you still show your best you know foot forward but you still want to have your personal touch to things um you know and i always say it's part of the environment you've chosen right mm -hmm. that you can do your work 
whatever it is that you do, you can do in a multiple places. You happen to have chosen what you were saying about being in the right place and in the right position and the place. So can you talk to about the environment and the position? Because that seems to be an area of struggle and why people often don't get promoted. Right. It is. Absolutely. And so it's also one of those things where you have to be really conscious of reading the tea leaves. And so what I first say is uh, decide how you want to show up. That's that's number one. You know, the things that are must for you. I'm not changing my natural hair for anybody. It's a must. I'm keeping it. You know, I could straighten it, but I don't want to. It's a must for me. Uh, I like my blonde hair. It's I, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping my highlights. I can compromise on other things. And, and a practical example is I love big hoop earrings with short hair. I don't wear them when I speak because I realize I move around a lot. And so I may wear those in my personal life, but I don't wear them when I'm working because all you see is these hoops moving around, which is very distracting on stage. It, it depends a lot in the industry and your role. Uh, my son works at a tech company. The CEO did an all staff and he had on a hoodie. And, and so, you know, their standard of dress is very different than say somebody in banking or somebody uh, in pharmaceutical or somebody in a more traditional corporate environment, say insurance. And so you part of it is, where you work, what you can get away with the tech, you can't get away with in other environments, but your skill set transfers. So if a must for you is I want to come dressed however I want to come and I want it to be okay, you have to find an environment where that works. What I provide is frameworks that allow you to make good decisions. Decide your must. Once you decide your must, look at what happens across industries all of those industries all of those companies have brands and part of their brand is their people and their culture and so you know if you work in the court system you're going to show up how the court system dictates people wear suits to work there or they they come business professional other places allow for business casual other places allow for casual just decide on your must determine how you want to show up stay in the driver's seat and then and then look at whether where you are aligns with that or not because what what i find is uh, people want to go in how they want to go in and it's not in alignment with where they are and so they're missing the decision point that they have to make uh and they're stalled in their career mm. Well, this goes to the next uh, question um, of, you know, what is the point where you decide that it's time to move on or out versus up? Yeah. So number one, no one should work at a job they hate. That's just number one. If you hate your job, you don't want to go in to work every day. This is consistent for you. It's time to look for a new position. Your attitude cannot possibly be right. You are not showing up as your highest and best if you hate your job. That's just a reality. So if you're in that position, that's a non-starter. Start looking for another job. When I talk about assuming an A player position, there are several factors that go into that. Number one, is there is this a temporary discontent? You know, a lot of times we have reorgs, we have people who are out, we've had a downsize, we're doing two or three jobs, but there is a plan to transition to something else. In temporary situations, I challenge people to stay the course. Now, I don't suggest you stay the course if you don't have any internal support. And that has been consistent. The things that you want are um, a pathway forward, uh, internal champions who are helping you navigate the landscape, political landscape, and a willingness to learn something new. If you don't have any of those and you're completely discontent, it's probably time to look for something else. I'm not a big fan of job hopping, Jody. I notice that people will stay a place a year, stay a place a year, stay a place a year. When I see a resume where you've only been places for four or five years, I have I have to dial in and see what's consistent about you. Because remember, you carry you wherever you go. That, that's the reality. So if you're finding your three jobs in and you're experiencing the same discontent, there's a misalignment with what you really want and the jobs that you're selecting. So back up and ask yourself, is that my challenge? Am I going for what I think I can get versus what I really want? Because if that's the case, you're al always going to be discontent. But if you're in a place where you peak, it's a small staff or it's a staff that's not moving a lot or you just don't have the internal champions, then you have to ask yourself, can I um, 
can I start to make deeper relationships? Is there Are there relationships I could make here? Do I need to make a lateral move so that I can move up? I've made a couple of lateral moves and then skyrocketed. Uh, or is it time to look for something different? Yeah, no, I tend to be, a, as I call myself for many years, since I'm a little aged now, a two-year girl. So I would, you know, I think the longest I've had, I'll call them real nine to five jobs have been for two years, part, you know, working in nonprofit. Sometimes a grant is over, things change. Um, but I do want to dig a little deeper in what you said of building deeper relationships that often people, um, like I would come to work for you, Katrina, because I'm so enamored and, you know, we met and you interviewed me and I'm going to work with you. And then you leave. Right. Right. And I didn't build outside of the Katrina team. So now Katrina's gone. So some folks in here have the question of, you know, you promised me a promotion, but then you're gone, right? The person who, and or leadership change, or, you know, my department got downsized and I'm sitting someplace else. And if I didn't have, you know, a Bob team, a Sue team, in addition to the Katrina team that knew that I was results oriented, you know, how do you, move on from that one personally your feelings right get out of your feelings as drake would say but then how do you then still maybe get a promotion um you know in times of turmoil which we're seeing a lot more in companies as they downsize reorg um get you know bought out mergers so some suggestions for folks that are in i'll say difficult positions that are kind of out of their control but how can they gain control of that yeah, so the interesting thing about downsizing Dior and all of that is very often there are people who benefit from that. I mean, obviously there are people, unfortunately, who lose their jobs, but lots of people get promoted in downsizing and transitioning and rewards. It happens all the time. But let me address a couple of things first. The reason I challenged you to start going to lunch with your coworkers is because I find particularly for people of color, we tend to isolate ourselves. We, we don't... Um, connect with other people, particularly people who don't look like us. And that becomes a detriment to our career because we're positioned as aloof and set apart and uh, separate from the team. And there's no win in that for us. And so we have to um, start to operate in a space of authenticity, which remember I said is vulnerability and intentionality and to start building connections up, down and across. So those lunches I talked about are to start building those deeper connections. Because if the only person that you're talking to or only people is your supervisor and those two or three people on your team, then you do not have enough advocates behind the closed door. It's super important that you get to know people from other areas of the organization for all the reasons that you just outlined, Jody. because there are reorgs that happen. There are downsizing that happens. And very often your supervisor does not have the juice. That's, that's just the honest truth. <laughs> your sponsor has to come from other places within the organization. So if, if you have the opportunity, start building those connections now. Even if you're in a place you like, even if you're planning to transition, start building those relationships. Because I have found in industries, you meet the same people coming and going. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in the middle of a downsize, that's that's challenging to do it right then because the focus of the organization is going to be how do i optimize um the talent i have with the dollars I can use. And so again, this is why showing up as your highest and best all the time is going to pay dividends for you. Because when they look to downsize, they say, who are the best people that we can keep in these roles? And you want your name on that list. It's super important that you have a mentor, a coach, a collaborator, an encourager, and if all possible, a sponsor. And I go through those five things in the book and talk about how to acquire each one of those. Because in season of turmoil, it's your mentor that's going to be able to help you with the right perspective, often with the right connections. See, sponsors provide a path, mentors provide perspective, and when you get a coach, it's to get you from one goal to the next. Hmm. And that's what people would like you to elaborate on a little bit more. The difference between these, you know, champions, I think of more as the mentors, sponsors, and also the importance of building this board of advisors, or as people might refer to, a board of directors. Um, and who are those types of people? You know, how different should they be? How similar should they be? Um, same industry, different industry, gender. 
Can you speak to that? So yeah. So let me sponsors and board of a director advisor. <laughs> So let me focus on the mentor for a second, because I meet a lot of people while I'm traveling and they say, oh, you don't know it, but you're my mentor. I'm like, oh, boo, that's so sweet. But no, if I don't know you, I'm not your mentor because mentorship is rooted in relationship, which means that if you have a mentor, it's a person who knows you, has a general idea of the circumstances in which you operate. You should have mentors that are both internal to your organization and external, because sometimes you need a person that's a little farther away from what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And they yeah. give you perspective based on you, your desires, your expertise, your um, personality. They give you perspective on how to operate. And they do it on an ongoing basis. I don't talk to my mentors every day or all the time. You're they don't know what's happening to me. Sometimes I look up and say, hey, I saw this, you may want to consider that. Or I call them. Now, when I have my mentor and I meet with them, Katrina, Katrina, yes. you're breaking up a little. Yes. You're breaking up a little. So just speak a little closer to the, to your mic. Yeah. Huh. Okay. There we go. Is that better? Yep. Yes. So when you have a mentor relationship, remember two things. Number one, when they speak, you should always have a notebook. You should always be taking notes. Don't ever go see your mentor and not have something to write or take notes with. And number two, it's a relationship. So you want to find out how you can give value to them as well. When my mentors call me to speak, I go speak because they're my mentor and they have poured so much into my life that I want to be able to pour into theirs as well. The stronger those relationships, the better the perspective. Now, a sponsor is very different. A sponsor is that not there to coach you or prepare you. A sponsor is a person who can make moves for you. They open doors you didn't even know exist. They place you in positions. And it usually happens behind the closed door. Sometimes you know who your sponsor is. It's really clear. You may or may not like their leadership style. You may or may not like them personally or in terms of personality. That's not what they're in your life for. They are in to place you in the next role. They have the juice. They have the credibility. And when they speak up for you, they're playing a chip on you and they expect a return on that chip. So they get more chips and can move more bodies. Usually the way people get sponsors is through excellence. I mean, I would like to say you could walk up to a person and say, will you sponsor me? But no, it's because they have observed your mm -hmm. performance and they believe that you are prepared for the next level. Now, what's interesting about that is you may not think you're prepared for the next level, but here's a tip. When somebody is pulling you up, go. You want to move when they say move, because remember, with a promotion, it's taking you outside your comfort zone. So you have the strengths and skills, even if you don't have the experience in that area. Promotions are designed to grow you. So the best way to get a sponsor is a, a powerful personal brand. They have heard of you. They know that you deliver because of your excellence. They see you doing the work. You stand out through that powerful personal brand, being in the right position and then excelling in your performance. Mm. It's true. Yeah. You, you know, sponsors choose you. That's not usually the chosen. That's yeah. definitely, that's definitely the, the pivot not the change in that. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? I know it's tough. We, we don't want to hear that because sponsors obviously can put you in a position. And so many of us struggle to get a sponsor. That's one of the reasons that I talk so much about personal branding and executive presence. When you walk in a room and you exude confidence and authority, a lot of times people talk about owning the room. You really are not trying to own the room. Your executive presence creates an, an, an aura of authority and confidence. And when you work on those five areas, particularly particularly how you communicate and show up, then word gets around about you. This is how people are chosen. And as a person who has been a sponsor and been a mentor, I can tell you, when you show up in those other three areas and then add excellence in your performance, a sponsor will identify you. Because remember, leaders are, are challenged to build other leaders. It is part of what their goals are to identify people and move them around. So the more people that they place in positions as a sponsor, the better they are as a leader. Yeah. And I was going to say a sponsor doesn't always have to be this powerful person either. They can just, I mean, sometimes it ends up being some of your friends. 
um, you know, in terms of job referrals, they know how tough you work and something happens to come across their desk that's not in their lane or something that they're working on that they're like, oh my God, Katrina would be perfect and can be a sponsor. So, you know, don't also think about sponsors as also only being internal to where you are and someone that has to be the highest ranking person either. People no, have in different no. places. Jody, it doesn't have to be the highest ranking person, but when friends do that, I call them collaborators. They're, they're really collaborators because the sponsor at the end of the day has the juice and it's not always your supervisor. Sometimes it's much better when it's not your direct supervisor uh, because mm -hmm. they can move you behind the scenes. But when your friends speak up for you, that's because of a powerful personal brand. They have experience with you that encourages them to put you forward. Because again, when your friend is recommending you or your colleague is because they know you, they have seen your work and they trust that when they speak up for you, you will deliver. And so that's why these connections are so important because the consistency in a personal brand, if you said a person's name, everybody's like, oh my God, she's so awesome. Consistent. That's that person's personal brand. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm totally in agreement. I, and I guess, you know, I like the collaborator, but sometimes, you know, your friends are in high places too, eventually in your career that are also decision yeah. makers. So, but I agree. Um, looking at, think, thinking about a lot of stuff that you brought up, um, you know, take some form of planning. Um, do you believe in some of these like 30, 90, 60 day plans or, you know, how should plans work when you're, you know, looking at your career? Is it at the start of a new job? Is it throughout? And how often should you check on that plan? And should you be doing it alone or with someone like an accountability person or a mentor or one of your board of directors? Um, yes, yes, and yes. So here's the thing. Yes, I believe in 30 day plans. When I teach personal branding, I take people through a half day session. They come out with a 30 day plan. And the mm -hmm. reason is because I believe in taking action now. That's why for each one of these steps, I gave you things that you can practically do. You can start to transition how you um, deliver on that ongoing process of establishing a prescribed image or impression today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. today. Little basic things like even if you think about how you show up, clean and declutter your closet. We have clothes in there that are too big, too small, and not in alignment with who we are today. Don't wear them. Get rid of them. Bless them with somebody else who can use them. And instead, find clothes that make you feel great. Like when I wear red, that's my power color. It's not always about the 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 type of clothes. Sometimes it's about the color that looks best against your skin tone. Um, learning how to appropriately put on makeup, uh, figuring out what can be your distinction. I've seen men do it through ties, cufflinks, uh, belts. There, there's always something that will let you express your unique personality and make you feel good about you. I've seen pieces of jewelry do it for other people. I've seen some women rock statement pieces of jewelry every day and that's their thing, the signature. They're known for that. The other thing is, if you don't do anything else, you got to define yourself. I mean, there is no way to show up consistently until you stop and think about who, who you want to be, who you are, and have that ongoing process supported. Personal branding is not about recreating yourself. It is about intentionally deciding how you want to show up and then delivering that consistently. So yes, I do believe in 30-day plans. I do believe in frameworks. And I believe in having accountability uh, partners, especially in things like executive presence. Here's a practical thing. People with executive presence don't slouch. But when we're in meetings for a long time, we do this. Or we're like this. Or we're halfway on the table. Or we're like this. No. People with executive presence sit. They own their authority over their body. They exude confidence. So if you have proclivities to that, or you say, um, and, or really find an uh, accountability partner. So after you come out of a meeting, this girl, how was that? How was my face? Did I show that attitude on my face? <laughs> if you have somebody that you're working with and they're working with together, it can exponentially increase the likelihood that you will show up as your highest and best. Mm. No, it does. Attitude matters. I always say that's why I don't play card games because my face is easily red. Big eyes and rolling eyes and ah, oh, it's all mess. <laughs> Could be a mess, but uh, no. In terms of uh, people want to know, of course, your own book is exciting. 
However, if there are some other resources, authors, or a couple of titles and authors that you would recommend for our audience today that they should pick up besides your book, like yep. your book and what else? So I love Brene Brown's new book, Dare to Lead. I think there's some interesting concepts in there. I love her TED Talk on uh, uh, vulnerability, too, because I think as people of color, we often struggle with that. And for good reason. Um, you know, we know that everybody does not have our best interests at heart, but we also can't close ourselves off to the point that nobody really gets to know us. There's a great book called Boundaries for people who want to show up authentically, but also know that they have a... Um, they are often create codependent relationships or overstep or allow people to overstep. I like that book. There's a book called The Little Red Book of Selling. And it is masterful. I'm, there are so many great principles in that little book. And I, because at work, you're selling two things, your value and your ideas. So those are three books that, that um, if you haven't read them, I think are great. Okay. Well, from one extrovert to another, um, any advice in this space for our introverts on the line who are definitely wanting to also get promoted? You know, they're usually the ones who are a little bit more hopeful that someone will see them doing their great work, um, but not tooting a horn. Are there some tactics um, and ways, you know, strategies you have for them so that they show up with the right equipment um, yes. to still succeed? Yes. So first of all, I'll say whether you're an extrovert or introvert, hoping that someone will see your good work is not a strategy. Amen. <laughs> it's not a strategy. <laughs> um, I, I think um, so. You know, being an extrovert doesn't make you more likely to get promoted because some extroverts talk too much. And so, you know, uh, I think knowing yourself, defining yourself and choosing how you will show up is your best strategy, extrovert or introvert. What you have to do is show up for introverts. It is super important that you build powerful and deep connections, powerful and deep connections, because you want people speaking up on your behalf, even when you're not in the room. So you have your powerful personal brand that speaks when you're not present. You're building connections with people that are present. Now, you don't have to build 50,000 connections. This is not about getting to know everybody at your company. This is about picking two or three or four people that you start to get to know at a deeper level. And once you've been there for a while, you observe people, start to, to schedule regular lunches. Don't sit at your desk. Our natural uh, thing to do is to sit by ourselves and catch up on work. Or if we've been in meetings all day to sit and just be. But you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to go meet people. You have to reach out. And so don't overwhelm yourself by trying to meet everybody, but at least take the first step. I often find that introverts often have incredible executive presence, incredible, because they have authority over themselves. When they speak, there is some substance to their words. And so I would use that uh, to your advantage and speak in such a way that you um, put good ideas on the table. You're known as a conversation thought starter. When they speak, they are eager to hear your words. And so I think using what you are naturally gifted with, whether that is reserved until it's time to speak, or you're an extrovert who gets everybody in the room energized, be that consistently at its highest and best. Yeah, well, I have to say I agree and I would add to your book list or everyone's book list here that speeds into what you said today is uh, uh, Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. Mm. And really his major, he's my brother separated from an Italian mother I don't have. But uh, Keith Ferrazzi, it's a bright orange cover book. I would even say get the ebook of it. It's something I refer to. It's, it will connect what you were bringing to us today, Katrina, with the pinging and the social media and the real life um, opportunities to really move your career ahead. So I do want to announce our two fabulous winners of today's books that we'll be following up with Katrina. Our winners, our winners, our winners. You guys want to know who it is? <laughs> it is Ashley Denzi and Cornell Jordan. So we will email you and get your information, your uh, questions. Everyone's questions today were fabulous, but you guys had a few more and came in early with your questions, not waiting for the conversation to start in addition to very insightful 
what you guys were asking really spoke to listening to what Katrina was saying and really how it personally was showing up in your career and your life now. So I'm hoping that you will be bolder, brilliant, more brilliant, and continue to be yourselves with this book. Um, so Katrina, today you brought the energy I expected. So glad that you are an FOJ, a friend of Jody. Um, <laughs> and I want to just announce that we have a couple more great digital career success series coming out throughout the year. Our next one is funding your venture. So for our entrepreneurs out there, you know, who want to get started or those of you that have a side hustle to get some great tips on how to fund a venture. And a lot of times it's not about the money, it's about the heart and the grit that Katrina was talking to us about today of just, you know, going the course. Um, you know, Felicia Hatcher, who was a C student and then suddenly a White House award winning CEO. She has two books out and she really helps the next generation of folks um, trying to really start their business. She's out of Miami, Florida, and we'll be bringing her to you live on March 20th. And then we will also have Equal Pay Day, but we're taking a twist on this. And if you have not heard of Dr. Dawn DeLavidad, um, she is a practicing physician and a champion for female breadwinners. She has a book called She Makes More, talking about unfortunate pay gap, where there are more women out here, especially women of color, who are making more than their male counterparts, and how that is impacting our communities as we grow and try to be promoted and live our best lives. And that will be coming live on April 2nd. Uh, so mark those down, please sign up, uh, RSVP, tell a friend. But Katrina, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. And remember to put your resume up on the Urban Leagues Job Network. You see that, nuljobsnetwork.com. We are looking to hire. There's companies looking to hire you. And Katrina just gave you the tips on how to get promoted in these places um, or move around. Maybe it's time for you to move on and out um, as long as you've hit that over a year mark, according to Katrina and myself, at least two years. Um, and so thank you so much, Katrina, for joining us today, our audience as well. I hope you got as much out of this as we thought you would. And Katrina, uh, we look forward to only more success with your book. Maybe we can have you come out to Indianapolis and inspire these people live. And uh, just wanting you to have great continued success with your career as well. So if we can do anything with you, in the future, please let us know. So on behalf of the National Urban League and the Urban League Jobs Network, thank you so much for joining us for today's Digital Career Success Series, the four Ps to promotion. Press start on your career. Have a great afternoon.